I'm so excited to speak with you today regarding managing the money goals in your business. On our last podcast together in episode 138, we discussed the five main money goals that needed to be established in your firm. Now we're going to talk about how and when to manage them. So this time, don't just grab your pen and paper, add a calendar and let's get to it. Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. Okay, so today we're going to talk about management strategies for the money goals that will help us accomplish them with more ease. You know, it's not enough just to set the goals that we discussed in episode 138 if we don't manage to them. And when we think of managing our goals, any goal really, I want you to consider three things. Is the goal clearly defined? This is the first one. Is the goal clearly defined? Is it a smart goal with the measurable aspect Number two, are the expectations and time really realistic? And number three, is it easy to measure and to notice or see the results? Because if those three things aren't true, then it may be that we're setting a goal that's either not measurable, one that's not realistic, or one that is so cumbersome to measure that we won't do it. So we must make the management of our goals as simple as possible if we want to stay on top of them. For me, one of the things I love doing is creating a checklist. I am just a checklist girl. I have a checklist for the things that I want to look at weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. But having a checklist alone is not enough to attain success. I I need to know what to look at and then how to analyze it. In other words, I need to know what I'm looking for and how it compares to what I need it to be. For example, let's say we set up our financial goals from episode 138 as follows. We have a total income of $100,000. Let's say we um, decided that our cost of goods would be 40%, so that's $40,000, which leaves us a gross profit of $60,000 or 60%. Then, because we're also following, let's say, a profit first model, our expenses would be 30% of that gross profit, so $18,000, and our net profit would be 70% of gross profit, which is $42,000. Each month, my management strategy for these goals would be to take that reconciled profit and loss statement to see what the numbers were for the month and how they compared with the percentages that I need them to be. Perhaps my monthly sales average needs to be $8,333 if I just took that $100,000 and equally divided it by 12. So then I'm going to compare how much I brought in that month. Is that the amount that I made in total income or that my firm earned? Was it more or was it less? If my cost of goods needed to be 40% of that, then I would calculate the percentage and see how it compared to the $3,333 cost of goods goal that I had. Okay. If I was on target, then I might keep going. If my percentage of cost of goods was too high, I would stop and look at why. Maybe it was because the income came in in the month prior and the vendor was paid this month, offsetting the income and expenses for the product purchases. That happens all the time. Maybe I forgot to mark something up. What matters is that I stop and look at the percentage for the month, compare it against the percentage that I estimated was necessary for my business financial success, and then looked at the decisions that created that outcome. This is what it means to manage. We must look at the area we're measuring and see how it stacks up against the plan. And if there's a difference, identify what's happening. The more often we do this for the most important areas, the quicker we can make small or micro changes that will potentially impact the business in a large way. 
If we only check our financials quarterly or at the half year mark, we now have six months that have already passed or three months that have already passed and we cannot make small changes that could you know, turn the entire trajectory of our financial future. One great area to watch like this is also billable time. This is true no matter if you're billing by the hour or by the project or a flat rate because the basis of even a flat rate is the hours that we think it's going to take to get the job done. Then when we're paid for that work by either billing for the hours or using up a retainer on a flat fee project, we need to know how many hours of billable work is required to bring in income each month so that then we can see if we're meeting it, exceeding it, or lagging behind the goal. While we cannot manage to every number in our business, it would be overwhelming and a full-time job, like all you would do is look at numbers all day and compare. We can identify the most important numbers that drive your business. The five mentioned earlier are super important in my opinion. And again, these are total income, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, and net profit. Another principle of good management is creating a time to do it, to do the analysis. For me, I like to manage my numbers within the first week of the new month for the prior month. So in other words, the first week of April, I'm going to be looking at March. The first week of May, I will be looking at the financials for April. At that time, I reconcile all of my accounts and do my profit first allocations, which prompts me to check my KPIs or key performance indicators that matter to me. I also book dedicated time on my calendar to do this. I've found that, you know, I had great intentions, but they didn't get done. They got, my time got taken up and sucked up with the other things that, that were needed if I didn't book it on my calendar. And so now I, I book it on my calendar and that keeps it from being pushed from day to day to day while other urgent things are taking place. I've started booking out the first Monday of each month with no client work or meetings, you know, as much as possible. On this day, I do my content creation for the month. I reconcile all of my bank accounts and manage to any metrics um, that I'm focusing on in the areas of finances, marketing, and maybe operations. This gives me a day to research anything that's coming up differently than planned. And it also allows a small bit of time to pivot on any strategy I need or to make a larger plan for further review. Because I'm not going to kid you, Sometimes the work that needs to be done is more than can be contained in one business workday, but at least this helps me set the plan for what that will be. Setting aside this one day a month has been a game changer. My calendar is booked for this day on that first Monday of every month for the entire year, and I get excited knowing that the time to focus on managing my company is already set aside and established. I also consider that a crucial meeting for my company. And so by knowing it, I can now manage in advance around that day. The SMART goals acronym that we've talked about when we're looking at building these um, financial goals or money goals stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. Every goal, financial and otherwise, is a goal that I care deeply about. If I don't care about that goal, I am not going to set it because there's nothing worse than seeing something written down that we don't care about. So really, when you are going through any type of process like this, be so intentional about what you want, why you want it, and how you're going to get it. So with that intention, I know that by creating the goal that it matters to me and to my company. Every goal I set needs to be managed, which means checking the outcome against the metric and timeline to achieve it. If you find that there was a number goal that you thought was important at one time and it no longer is, that's okay. Just let it go. There are times when I want to manage one area of my business in detail. And then after I finish that, it's not as big of a concern. Here's, here's just a, a lighthearted example. When I first started my podcast, I was managing and measuring how many listeners I had, how many followers, how many downloads almost daily at the beginning. And after a while, it moved to weekly and monthly. And now I randomly check it. 
not because I don't care, but because the feedback I get is that I'm reaching the right people, you, um, that you're listening, and I just don't need to do such a detailed check-in day to day to day. You may find the same thing in your firm. Everybody needs to start somewhere. So my suggestion is to start with looking at these five big financial numbers, because as you can see, each of them tells a story. Your total income tells the story of how your billable time translates into income. It also tells the story of how much product you've sold. So just setting a goal and then breaking it down into sub goals is a lot of information that can lead you down the path of managing billable hours and product sales. Cost of goods is the number that is going to tell you how much of the sales price is going to be paid out to the vendor and not usable income for your company to run. By knowing this number and comparing it to gross profit and product income, you will immediately know your profitability by product type and you'll be able to analyze your markups and margins to see which categories are the most profitable for you. Gross profit is a number that will show you what your company is really worth. And this number will indicate to you if you have enough to run your firm. Managing to gross profit will help you know if you can sleep at night without added stress. The operating expense number will show you overall how much your company eats up in profits. And like other categories, it can be broken down so that you know the percentage needed for payroll, rent, marketing, and other expense types. Managing to these allows you to create a budget that when managed gives you even more information as well as freedom and stress relief. And then managing the net profit allows you to see how much profit is in the company after expenses are paid. And this number can also be broken down into areas such as bonus, profit, owner's distribution, taxes, etc. These numbers do not have to be scary. Knowing them and their relationship to each other and, and that the decisions that you're making around them actually becomes empowering. Every day, you and your team make decisions that affect these numbers. So instead of being managed by the business, it allows you to manage the business. If you're looking for the fastest way to begin, do this. Number one, identify the main numbers that you want to manage and create the metrics around that and the timing to check it. Number two, put time on your calendar to do the analysis. Number three, create a checklist that helps you know what to look at, how to look at it, and when to look at it. Number four, do it. As you progress, you'll get faster, and then you're going to identify more areas to manage and inspect. You will learn to establish your own rhythm, the rhythm that works for your firm. This is a great reminder time that we get what we inspect and not what we expect. So inspect what matters to you and to your firm when it matters most. In all of the financial courses that I've built, I um, have a lesson in those on metrics and managing to them. Because if not, it's like it's just a lot of information that we don't use, right? It comes in your head and out of your head. It is so important to the company um, that you have that you're working to be sustainable. And part of that is by looking at the numbers. Go over to my website, scarletthreadconsulting.com, and look at the freebies page. Out there, I have a financial health checkup. Download that document, and it will help you see where you are managing the numbers in your firm and where you're not. See which numbers you know and which ones you don't. And then create a plan to support your company by reviewing your numbers. Managing to the numbers can lead to profit, and profit doesn't happen by accident. Profit is a Choice is proud to be part of the designnetwork.org, where you can discover more design media reaching creative listeners. Thanks for listening and stay creative and business minded.